And so let me um, introduce Gail. Sorry, and all my. Um, so Gail, I don't even know to to read, but um, so Gail Walker is executive director or director of IFCO Pastors for Peace, and I will let her take it away. Great. Can you hear me, Rachel? Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and Frank and, and the whole team. What a tremendously rich and important event. I've learned a lot. Um, I'm just going to try to make this con uh, concise. I uh, wanted to follow up on uh, the role of the faith community in the fight against the Cold War. Uh, Peter's, uh, uh, just his presentation, I think, was just so rich and so, so powerful. Uh, too often, we know that the religious right has attempted to claim what it means to be a person of faith, but it has been my experience to see clergy that I respect. And for me, uh, especially Black clergy, um, case in point was the radical MLK that Jeff Cohen just referred to. Um, it's been my experience to see them step up to support movements and issues of concern to those of us fighting against injustice, from the savagery of, uh, of uh, slavery to the vicious impact of Jim Crow, from the criminal legacy of police brutality to the campaigns of wicked barbarity waged by the U.S. empire at home and abroad. And as Dr. Uh, Leah Gunning Francis, who wrote about the role of spirituality during the uprising in Ferguson, Missouri, following the murder of Michael Brown said, quote, being called to lead a faithful life can take us to places we never expected to go with people who never expected us to join hands with them. I just always feel that that's such a powerful statement. But liberation theology has historically been connected to the fight for uh, social justice as Peter was laying out in, in a world that it oppresses and as such is a tangible expression of what it means to work with God to embrace a future filled with hope is what it means to walk with God. So whether you identify as a person of faith or not, we all benefit from embracing hope. And I've been asked to just say a few words this evening about the legacy of my father, the late Reverend Lucius Walker, a visionary pastor of, for peace uh, who wore so many hats, but I just wanna speak briefly about his work with IFCO, the Interreligious Foundation for Community Organization. For the past 53 years, IFCO, much, much of it under the leadership of my father, has followed in that tradition of liberation theology. IFCO has organized and supported a variety of social justice issues and campaigns across the world associated with the historic and current Cold War. Uh, domestically uh, involved in the call for reparations, support of Native American uh, rights, farm labor organizers fighting injustice uh, of um, for forced sterilization of women, calling for the brutality of the Klan, other white supremacists and modern day right wing extremists and standing up for political prisoners, uh, working on issues like hunger and homelessness and environmental racism. Internationally, if those work has involved campaigns supporting our brothers and sisters in Africa and Central America, Chiapas, Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Palestine, Venezuela and more. Some of you know that IFCO's work to identify the hypocrisy of the so-called low intensity warfare in Central America is what led to the creation of a special project that my father labeled Pastors for Peace. And I was with him in 1988 when a passenger ferry carrying 200 Nicaraguan civilians and uh, an IFCO study delegation were attacked by US funded Contras who Ronald Reagan called quote, freedom fighters. Right. The attack started with individual gunfire, followed by automatic gun machine gunfire and then heavy artillery that violently shook the ferry boat from side to side. Uh, the weapons that the Contras used in that attack and the countless others uh, that the Nicaraguan civilian population were forced to endure throughout the Reagan era were all paid for with U.S. tax dollars. And that attack resulted in the deaths of two people, um, dozens wounded, including my father. Uh, the first caravan, the first Pastors for Peace caravan returned to Nicaragua six months later on Christmas Eve with a busload of material aid for communities, um, from communities in the United States where clergy and activists had stopped to educate US citizens about the reality of the brutal US foreign policy in the region. Um, our caravan served to illustrate an alternative people-to-people -people foreign policy model based on love and mutual respect. 
And since then, IFCO's continued to illustrate that commitment to social justice working alongside people of conscience and people of faith. So whether that faith be in our fellow human beings or in a particular religious belief, uh, we've worked together. We've organized dozens of caravans throughout Central America and the Caribbean, embrace, embracing our commitment to fundamental social change, not charity. Uh, in short, it was my dad's belief that all people who struggled for justice were pastors. Uh, so at IFCO, we continue that work. We continue to work with all kinds of pastors for peace. And we continue to work because we believe that the foundation that he helped to build um, is really served as a blueprint for us to continue the important work of fighting for justice through action and education, encouraging us all to be shepherds for peace. And as he would call us to do time and time again, to step up and be real revolutionaries by practicing our faith. I think now we're gonna have courtesy of my dear friend, Rachel Brunke, uh, a beautiful, but brief uh, video tribute to my father, the Reverend Lucius Walker, whose revolutionary spirit lives on. Thank you. Lucius Walker, founder of IFCO Pastors for Peace, was a highly effective and infectious thorn in the side of the U.S.'s hateful Cold War policies. While in Nicaragua in the 1980s, he was shot by Contra mercenary fire. He was inspired to begin solidarity caravans of aid to Central America, and later, after the fall of the Soviet Union, to Cuba as the United States tightened its economic blockade against the island nation. The caravans have been going ever since, and for decades crisscrossed the entire United States on an annual basis, countering the U.S. Cold War lies about Cuba and its importance to the world. Lucius was a bold and principled man of the cloth. He was a revolutionary thinker who never asked permission to build friendships between people or nations that the United States told us to fear and to hate. In fact, we should need permission to wage war, not permission to make peace. Love, he said, was the only license we needed to go to Cuba. Lucius Walker was a great visionary and a liberator of minds and hearts. He passed away in 2010, and to me he was our king in the Cuba Solidarity Movement. His profound work to bust through the U.S. Cold War blockade against Cuba is carried on today by his daughter, Gail Walker, director of IFCO. She is pictured here alongside American graduates of the Latin American School of Medicine in Havana, Cuba. They are now doctors, part of more than 150 Americans who have graduated along with tens of thousands of others from around the world from the free medical school. If you know of any young Americans under the age of 25 from economically disadvantaged backgrounds who have dreamed of becoming a doctor please let them know about this opportunity and to contact IFCO, Pastors for Peace. Lucius Walker, presente. Presente. That's my gift to you, Gail. John and my gift to you. Um, thank you. Um, 